On behalf of Christiana and Nathan, I would like to welcome you and thank you for being here for this sacred, joyous occasion. They are honored to have you celebrate this day with them. And to Nathan and Christiana, on behalf of all of us, I want to thank you for inviting us to be here and to share this moment with you. It is truly a holy moment. So, with a spirit of worship and a praise for the God who makes all good things, let us begin. You may be seated. Who gives this woman to be married to this man?
As we have gathered together, we are in the presence of God. Let us give thanks to God for these two individuals and for the good gift of marriage. And let us ask for God's blessing upon their union. Please pray with me. Gracious God, you are always faithful in your love for us. Look favorably upon Nathan and Christiana, who have come seeking your blessing. May your spirit rest upon them, guide them, and sustain them throughout their marriage, so that with steadfast love they may honor the promises they make this day. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. Christiana and Nathan, congratulations, you made it. Today is the culmination of months of planning, sacrifices made, time spent, and way too many decisions to consider. Today is also a day of celebration and joy with your friends and family who have come from all over to share this special moment with you. It is a day of resolution and deep, enduring commitment, and certainly it is a day that you will never forget. For that reason, I want to encourage you right now to take a moment to look around at all the beauty that's around you and breathe. Soak it all in. It is impossible to sum up what you two are doing today with words. All the symbolism, meaning, and beauty cannot easily be captured. But what is at the foundation of everything that is happening here today is the promise or covenant that you two are making with one another. Love is a funny word in English. We use the word when we talk about our love for a sports team or a favorite dessert. We use the word love when we talk about our family members and the love and bond we have with friends. We are also most familiar with the love in terms of romance and passion. So when we say love in English, it can have a variety of meanings, and we need to use our context to understand what one is saying. The ancient Greeks did not have this problem, for they had four different words to describe the different types of love. And when we read 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7, we might assume it is referring to a romantic love. We hear this passage used in weddings often, and there was a reason why this passage was selected for today. It is a beautiful text. But it is not talking about a romantic love, not, at least not exactly. No, Paul is talking about a form of love that enhances romantic love. So with this, let us read from 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable. It keeps no records of wrong. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. What we must realize about this passage is that it is not an isolated poem. While it is beautiful and can be understood on its own, it takes on a much greater depth when we put it in its context. This passage takes place in the middle of the letter to the church in Corinth. This church that Paul founded was dealing with disputes that was leading to broken relationships. And Paul wrote this letter to help bring this expression of the church, this expression of Christ, back into unity. Paul wants to make clear that everyone knows that they are one in the Messiah, one in Christ. So when we get to this passage, Paul is asking the church in Corinth and all of us here today to pause, to move into a different key and rhythm and deepen our understanding of the highest virtue, the greatest quality, the most Jesus-like characteristic you can imagine, and that is love. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Paul's not necessarily talking about romantic love because romantic love can only get us so far. It can't sustain our relationships on its own because romantic love and passion can be fleeting. Romance and passion does have its place. That's what brought us here together. You two have had a fire in your hearts and brought you to this altar. But the love of Paul, what the love Paul's referring to is a deeper form of love that romance is sustained by, that is enhanced by. The love that Paul's referring to is a deeper love, a committed love, a love that seems silly to the rest of the world, a love that best describes who Christ is. It is a love to re- uh, to re-say the, the passage, a love that best describes who Christ is. It is a love that is patient, 
and kind and not envious or boastful. It is a love that is not arrogant or rude to others. It does not insist on its own way, but is open. It is a love that is not irritable or keeps a record of wrong doings from the, from <clears throat> throughout your marriage or rejoices in wrongdoing. This love bears all things. It believes in all things. It believes in each other, hopes in all things, and it endures all things as life is often full of things we must endure. This form of love is powerful and beautiful, and to some, perhaps a simple ideal to try to live up to. But I'm here on this altar to tell you both today that this love is attainable. It is through Jesus that your commitments and vows that you make to each other today will be, be sustained by love. Nathan and Christiana, take this passage as a guide on how to best love each other. Come back to it often. Read it slowly. Meditate on a single word for days or maybe weeks. Let this passage wash over you both. In doing so, it will transform your marriage into a radical expression of love. Your marriage will overflow with the love of Christ, and it will overflow to others. It will be a beacon for others. And so with that, we begin the exchange of vows. Dearly beloved, we are gathered together here in the sight of God to join this man and this woman in holy matrimony, which is commended of Paul to be honorable among all people, and therefore is not to be entered into unadvisedly or lightly, but reverently, discreetly, advisedly, and in the fear of God. Into this holy estate, these two persons come now to be joined. Nathan, do you take Christiana to be your wedded wife, to live together after God's ordinance and the holiest state of matrimony? Do you promise to love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health and forsaking all others? Keep yourself only unto her as long as you both shall live. Christiana, do you take Nathan to be your wedded husband, to live together after God's ordinance and the holiest state of matrimony? Do you promise to love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep yourself only unto him as long as you both shall live? I do. Nathan, please repeat after me. I take you, Christiana, to be my wedded wife. I take you, Christiana, to be my wedded wife. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, to love and to cherish, till death do us part, till death do us part, according to God's holy ordinance, according to God's holy ordinance, I give you my word, I give you my word. Christiana, please repeat after me. I take you, Nathan, to be my wedded husband. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. For richer, or poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. According to God's holy ordinance. According to God's holy ordinance. I give you my word. I give you my word. Now I have the rings, please. As a token of your love and commitment to each other, you will give and receive the rings. May these rings be your symbols of understanding love and faithfulness, reminding you of the covenant that you made on this day. Nathan, as you place this ring on Christiana's finger, please repeat after me. With this ring, With this ring I pledge my love and life to you. I pledge my love and life to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the, Son, and of the, Spirit. And of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Christiana, as you place this ring on Nathan's finger, please repeat after me. With this ring, With this ring I pledge my love and life to you. In the name of the Father, 
and of the Son, and of the, Son. And of the, Spirit. And of the Spirit. Amen. Christiana and Nathan, the two separate candles here symbolize your separate lives, separate families, separate sets of friends, in other words, your lives before today. Lighting the center candle represents that you two lives are now being joined together as one. Please, uh, pick up the candles, light the center. Let us pray one more time. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, for you have created joy and gladness, pleasure and delight, love, peace, and fellowship. Pour out the abundance of your blessing upon Christiana and Nathan in their new life together. Put their love for each other, let their love for each other be a seal upon their hearts and a crown upon their heads. Bless them in their work and in their companionship. Awake and asleep, in joy and in sorrow, in life and in death. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Since Christiana and Nathan have made these commi commitments before God and this assembly, by the authority vested in me, I declare that Nathan and Christiana are husband and wife. Nathan and Christiana, you are no longer two independent persons but one. What God has joined together, let no one separate you. Nathan, you may kiss your bride. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to present to you for the very first time, Nathan and Christiana Elmore. Families of Nathan and Christiana, I want to thank you for being here for this joyous occasion. There is a reception to follow at Alpine Parks and Gardens. 
we ask that you please remain seated, and Benjamin will come here releasing you by row. Uh, and with that, thank you.